Warping in Ableton allows you to change the playback speed of a piece of audio without changing its pitch. And it's something that makes Ableton Live a very unique digital audio workstation. When you're pulling in different audio clips, they can be at different BPMs and you can time align them so that they all work together and play at the master tempo set inside of Ableton. Ableton does this automatically, but you can also manually change the timing of the audio samples yourself. I'm going to show you how to do that inside of Ableton. Clicking on an audio clip up in the title will open the clip view. Inside of the clip view, we can see all the features for changing the warping characteristics of that audio clip. This yellow button indicates the warping is currently turned on for this particular clip. It's using what's called beats mode and Ableton has various different ways of warping audio, but beats mode is typically what you would use on drums or percussion. We've also got some parameters that we can change for that beat warp mode. And then down here, we've got the BPM. When this sample was first imported into my project, Ableton made an attempt at understanding what the tempo of that audio clip was. And its guess was that it was 97 BPM. You'll notice that up here, the tempo of my project is 130 BPM. And if I play this audio clip, if I loop it, and then I turn on the metronome. You'll notice that even though this was originally 97 BPM, it has been stretched to work in time at 130 BPM and it plays with my metronome. Further to that, if I then decided I wanted to change the tempo and speed things up, I could turn the tempo up and press play and it still plays in time. I could then turn it down so I have the flexibility of kind of changing the tempo of my track whenever I want. I could also automate the tempo to change over time. This gives us a lot of creative opportunity because we could shift the tempo over time and all of our audio clips will continue to play in time with one another in time with the master BPM. If I turn off the warping on this audio clip, You'll notice that it returns to its natural length, the length of the clip as it was recorded at whatever speed it was, in this case, 97 BPM. And if I go ahead and press play, I'll just turn the metronome off and press play. That's the natural speed of the clip. And if I go and change my tempo to 97, you'll see that that clip actually perfectly fits within a bar. So Ableton was correct in estimating what the BPM of that clip was. If we go back to 130 BPM and we go ahead and press warp, it didn't move itself back and fit within that one bar period. Okay, So we're going to have to manually do that. And we can actually do it very quickly. Once warping is enabled, we can actually hold shift and move our cursor to the end of the clip where you can see it is a bracket with a little arrow pointed towards the bracket. That means that if I click and drag it, I can change the length of the clip and I could move it back to fit within that one bar period of time. And then I could press play to verify that it's back at its natural speed. It's not its natural speed, sorry. That is back and it's sitting in time with this uh, 130 BPM tempo. It's really useful to think of audio in Ableton as though it's a piece of elastic. And when you stretch it uh, to the point that you would like it to be, like the length that you would like it to be, you can put a pin in the beginning and the end of it to keep it at that length. So inside of Ableton, we have warp markers, and these are the pins that we use. You can see a warp marker here, this yellow little arrow, and there's one at the beginning as well. And we can just grab that and drag it to stretch the clip to be longer or shorter. But we can also zoom in and we could put a marker at the beginning of a sound, at the transient of the sound, and then we could manually warp it to be falling in time with our um, grid. Now, if I do that, it has also changed the placement of all of these other sounds and if I take that out 
you'll notice everything just jumped across back into its original place. So what I could do is I could put a pin here and then I could put a pin in the beginning of the audio and I could drag that and then nothing from that point onwards is affected. So I can just move this in time. Okay. So if I take that out, you'll notice it jumps because now everything from that point onwards is also affected. And then if I take that out completely, it's just going to jump back into its spot before we made any adjustments to it. So that's how the warp markers work. Currently, this piece of audio here is not in time. So if I put the metronome on and play it, it's playing out of time. So I'll show you very quickly how we can stretch it using the warp markers. And we can move it. And if I zoom in just a little bit and I go, I think there, boom, now it's in time. Everything lines up. If I want to move that hit, because I think maybe it could occur a little bit later, what I can do is I can put a marker here so that everything from that marker forward is preserved. And then I put a pin in the beginning and I just shift that across to the place that I think it should hit at. And then I can press play. Everything through here is playing in its normal timing. Right, and that plays at that new time that we've selected. If you're enjoying this video, then check this out. I've just dropped a 50 kick preset pack called Impact. It's available now on my website. Or if you want Impact and all of my other sample packs, plus private Discord server access, then you can become a Patreon supporter. Links are in the description. I'll see you there. Now, as mentioned, Ableton has different ways of warping audio. And the beats mode is the mode that generally you're going to be using for drum loops and percussion. Okay, It's best for sounds that have defined transients. And what beats mode does is it tries to actually preserve transients. Now, something that you really need to understand, um, which is quite hard to actually explain, is... If you actually stretch a piece of audio and you make it longer, that piece of audio, when it's sampled, you've got a digital file, which is ones and zeros, right? And all it's doing is it's describing the volume of the sample at a given point in time. And that's all the information that it, that it preserves. It, it preserves or, or, or contains. It contains the amplitude of the signal and the timing of the signal. And it has many, many different slices of information in a second that make up the wave file, right? But when we just try to actually stretch that, it's not like you're adding more slices of detail if you make it longer, okay? And so you're, you're not creating new sound when you stretch something. So you actually need to do something digitally to fill in the gaps that are created when you stretch something. So this is what Ableton's warp mode does. It's actually quite sophisticated. And so it decides how we are going to fill the gaps when we stretch something to be long and there's no sound to be had anymore. And I'll give you an example because it just sounds strange when I describe it. But if I play this loop to you, at the moment it's sort of just playing at its natural speed and this is just how it sounds. Okay. Now, if I change the preserve mode, just keep it on transients. If I change this to what's called off, this is the off feature. Okay, so you'll you understand in a second. And I play this. It still plays through normally. But if I go ahead and increase the length of this clip by two, if I make it a lot longer. Now, when I press play, you will notice it plays, but with gaps. There's no sound in between the transients that are playing. And so, first of all, the mode that we've got beats mode on is the preserve mode is set to transients. Okay. And this means that Ableton is automatically going to identify the transients in the file and is going to try to preserve them. What does that mean? Okay. If you stretch something to be very long, the transient or the attack or the punch of the sound gets stretched out. And so it loses its impact, right? Because we've just stretched it and smeared it out. It's no longer got a, a, a tight and punchy attack. So what preserve mode 
does is it says, okay, well, Ableton is going to try and keep intact the transient. So it's going to play that back more or less at its normal speed, even though we've stretched it to be very long, just so that we keep the sound intact. But that means that we also don't have any sound to play in between the next transient. Okay, so if I press play, we're keeping the original transient intact, but then it's going to silence in between. So, okay, well, there are some ways that we could try to fill that silence. So we have these different loop modes. And what this does is it plays through the sound. And when it gets to the end of the audio clip that it's got, like the amount of audio that it's got, it will play through again and it'll basically just loop. So it does a little mini loop. Like if I just put a loop on here, it just plays through again until it gets to the next transient. And you're going to hear that. So I'll turn that off and I'm going to play it. Right? All this glitching is because every time it's playing through to the next transient, if there's no sound anymore, it'll just loop back on itself and it'll keep playing until it gets to the new transient, right? So this is a transient, this is a transient, this is a transient. So it's going to play. There's no audio anymore. So it'll just keep looping, looping, looping until it gets to the next one. It'll play and then it'll loop, loop, loop until it gets to the next one and then it'll play and then it'll loop, 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 right? And it just does this constantly. So listen again. All that glitching like sound you get is because it's just looping around until it gets to the next transient and then it plays the next transient, loops, plays the next transient, loops. Cool. So then there's another way you could do it as well. You could say, okay, play through and then reverse, right? So rather than loop, right? So play through, go back to the beginning, play through, that's looping. Instead, we reverse, we play through. And then we go back and then we go back and then we go back until the next transient. Okay, so it just reverses and it has a different sound. Cool. So it just sounds like things are reversing back and then playing forward, reversing back and playing forward. Okay, so that is what Beats Mode is doing. It's just trying to fill the gaps because we're stretching something out. Because there's no audio there anymore, it's going to fill the gaps. Away we go. If I go back to this off um, control, here we've got a volume envelope. So if I press play, right? So it's already getting gated because there's no audio in between, but I can further gate that, right? So even less of the audio is coming through. And I could do that for each of these modes. So I can set it however I would like. Cool. And if I go double time and play that and open that right up, right, I'm getting a lot of looping and a lot of glitching. So you can go nuts with this uh, and you can get a really cool result. The next mode is tones. This one's pretty simple. Um, it's best for like melodic sounds like vocals or instruments. And it uses granular synthesis. And what it does is it um, is good obviously for things that have a distinct pitch and it just uses granular to kind of create more sound in between that is at that pitch. So if I play this, right, that's it normally. If I make it longer uh, and then play it and I can play with the grain size, right? That's the only control I have. This one's quite simple, but that's just the way that you can use uh, warping on tonal sounds and it sounds most natural. And if you put a little bit of reverb on that as well, it smooths it out even more. That we have texture. And texture is very similar to tones, but it just gives you a little bit more control over the way that the granular synthesis works. And texture is usually what you would use on like pads or atmospheric sounds, noise, that sort of thing. Anything that doesn't have anything like rhythmically to it or any sort of strong tonality to it. And so I've just got some vinyl crackle here. Right, and I'll make it longer. And then I could play around with the grain or flux, right? And something really interesting about this particular mode, this is my favorite mode. 
Reason being is because then if I go in and I start changing, say, the transposition of the sound, you get really interesting textures out of it. So if I just pitch that up, and if I just do it a bit quicker. You hear that? It sounds awesome. If I go all the way up. So you can have a lot of fun with playing with the grain size, the flux, and then the transposition of the sound. And uh, next we'll talk about the repitch. So repitch works like you're playing a piece of vinyl and you change the speed of the vinyl's playback. For example, if you slow down a vinyl, things pitch down. If you speed up a vinyl, things pitch up. And like I mentioned before, warping allows you to change the length of a sample without adjusting the pitch. Well, uh, repitch changes the pitch. Okay, so let's turn it on. Well, let's first listen. You'd do it again if you thought you could get away with it, wouldn't you? Right, so whatever. And then repitch. You'd do it again if you thought you could get away with it, wouldn't you? The same, because we haven't stretched it. If we stretch it to be longer. So, yes, very demonic. But because we've stretched it to be long, we've slowed it down, so it's pitched down. And then if we go the opposite way. You'd do it again if you thought you could get away with it, wouldn't you? We're getting somewhat chip monkey kind of vibes out of it, okay? So pitching up or pitching down. So repitch is also really useful for if you are, for example, using Ableton to DJ and you want to put your tracks in um, and you want to warp your tracks, but you're always going to more or less play them back at the tempo that they are. So it won't be pitched up or pitched down because you're playing it back at its normal speed. Repitch is the best warping um, algorithm to have it on because it does not change anything. A lot of the other um, warping algorithms can introduce artifacts, especially in the low end and the low frequencies, which can destroy your tracks. So I always use repitch mode. To wrap things out, inside of Ableton settings, if you come to record, warp and launch, under warp and fades, You've got the behavior for how Ableton will warp audio as you're pulling it into your project. So the default warp mode, you could change that from beats to any of these other ones. You could automatically warp long samples or not, right? And actually I would suggest to have that off because I find it quite annoying when I'm pulling in really long clips and Ableton takes forever to process it. Uh, and I often don't want that processing. And then here you've got um, the automatic behavior for Ableton if you're pulling in short samples and you can change that as you need. So that was a comprehensive look at Ableton's warping features. I hope that you learned a lot in this video. If you would like to support the channel and become a member of the collective intelligence community, you could consider supporting me on Patreon and joining the private Discord server so that you can chat with myself or other like-minded producers. And if you would like to keep learning, you can go ahead and watch this video. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your support and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.